right, Sci-Fi Express Lane, Jeff Carroll here. Uh, been having some real interesting conversations since I posted, you know, my uh, video with the two, not really the video, the two uh, programs that I went to, uh, one in Miami, the IGN Film Festival, um, and the one um, event that I went to up in uh, Wellington, Florida, near West Palm Beach. And um, I've been getting people, you know, responded to me like, yo, we don't, you know, we don't, you know, we, we don't understand B movies, you know, we don't need those. And, and um, it just brought into, you know, another conversation that I always have about my um, love for comedy and lighthearted stories, right? which sometimes are more B-movie, but, you know, it goes back to me saying that I liked Eddie Murphy as one of my top actors and felt that he, you know, this was, you know, a couple of years ago, but I'm still going to keep him, is up there with, with Denzel Washington. And people are like, no way. Denzel Washington has this, you know, incredible body of work, and I'm not taking anything away from Denzel. I'm just saying Eddie's up there, you know. Um, now, I guess you could probably say he fell off. He just ain't been making movies in years. Um, comedies kind of have fallen off, you know what I'm saying? As much as Kevin Hart is pumping stuff out, um, it's really, it's not, it doesn't feel for me like it felt when Eddie was doing 48 Hours, not 48 Hours, but 48 Hours started it. But we had a lot more, you know, of course, the Nutty Professors, of course, Life, Harlem Nights. We haven't had, you know, many movies like that since, you know, and I love Rush Hour. That kept it going, you know, but, um, and I'm, I, this is no particular order. I'm just thinking, you know, out of my head, but I wonder, and I was talking to a, a, a drama teacher at my school, you know, we call it drama, right? But there's more to acting then drama, the other side of the face is humor, it's comedy. And for me, I personally believe, one, we need more comedy. Number two, or lightheartedness, which can be B-movies, right? Um, number two, uh, comedy is harder than drama to do, right? So we need more of it, and I think it's just harder to do. Why do I say it's harder to do? Well, I think a lot of people experience more drama in their lives than comedy. I think drama is more impactful. You never see somebody say they got traumatized from laughing too hard, traumatized from having such a beautiful experience. I remember when we used to do, um, the, uh, uh, God, what is it called? Um, youth retreats in college. We used to do retreats for leadership, leadership retreats, right? And one of the um, questions we always did at a leadership retreat was, you know, um, special item, right? Um, most memorable experience, things like that. And rarely, very rarely did you hear, have somebody say, it was something humorous. And of course, I think we're also drawn and attracted to drama. So there's a big pull for things that are dramatic. You know what I'm saying? But all of that makes my case. I think because we're drawn to drama, we experience more firsthand dramatical experiences. Um, you know, uh, we're more traumatized, heavily impacted by it. I look at the kids that I have come into school, you know, and some of them be sleepy. And, you know, they never said, oh, my parents was up laughing and joking all night. No, they said their parents was fighting, yelling, screaming. You know, one girl says she just closes the door on her mom so her mom flips out. I, you don't never hear nobody saying, yo, my father be joking too much. I have to, I can't laugh anymore. It's, you know, it's all funny, funny, you know. Don't really hear that, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it exists. Maybe in my house, because <laughs> I joke a lot. Damn it, I forgot my cough drops. But you don't hear anybody say that. And so for me, when it comes to acting, actors have a bigger body of experiences to pull from when they are, um, are approaching a, a, a dramatical scene as opposed to a humoristic scene. Uh, I was thinking even on the inter so to me that's that's harder, right? Because you know, writing something dramatic is not as hard as it is. I mean, yeah, it's not as hard as it is to write something funny. You know, and people say, oh, you can do something. Yeah, see if you can do it. See if you can do something funny. You know, see if you can really make somebody laugh. Try doing that. It's not that easy, right? Some some people make it look easy, you know. I love when I get in a role, I can do it real good, but you know, it's hard when you don't make somebody laugh and you was trying, you know. Um, drama is really, you know, I, I, I remember, you know, I have a friend that tells stories and the way he tells stories or she tells stories it just gets boring sometimes. It's not that the drama isn't there. The drama's there, but they're not it's not punchy, right? Um, so that's how you do when you tell a bad dramatical story or you get into something. But funny stories, clear. You're not laughing. It ain't funny and it ain't good. Um, but then you take uh, the month of October, right? 2022. We had the movies Black Adam come out with the, the actor The Rock, who's very humorous. And then we had um, Till come out. Very dramatic story. I doubt there's anything in the in the movie that you should laugh at. Story of Emmett Till and his mother fighting for awareness and justice in her son's uh, murder. Right? So we had two black ex type stories. Like Black Adam you could say this black. There's about you know four or five strong black, black people in the story. Um, and The Rock is a humorous uh, person. But yes, so you had all of that. And, you know, um, which which ones are theaters for? What do we go to theaters for? What should we go to theaters for? Should we go to theaters for for the, uh, like, if we had to buy a ticket? Which one are you telling people to buy a ticket? I do think there's some value in going to see um, both, right? I think there's value in going to see and tell. I should think my son in that generation that um, has this Barack Obama freedom that, you know, kind of may not experience the racism that other people have experienced that this country is founded on. Um, they need to see things like Emmett Till, right? Um, just so they can make it real. And I think that also goes to sort of everybody, right? But we put that on drama. We put that, yo, you ain't gonna enjoy it, but you need to see it, son. We put that on drama. Do we ever say that about comedy, humor? We take it for granted. And then we see people suffering from mental health. We have high blood pressure. I think, you know, we don't laugh enough. And, you know, people say, oh, there ain't nothing to laugh about. Well, then that's why you need comedy. You need to go see a movie that's humorous. You need to go see a movie that's lighthearted. Maybe go see a comedian. They make jokes out of the tough, rough situations. Yeah, it doesn't change the situation, but you get your blood pressure lowered just by a hearty laugh. So it feels so good. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's a laugh a day keeps the doctor away, but a laugh is good for your mental health. Get that out of your system run it through, become regular. Maybe a laugh is like water. Maybe it's like fluid running through you. I have no idea. Um, but I actually think um, movies like The Rock um, in Black Adam are as important as movies like Till. Now, you have to see The Rock specifically? No. And I don't even think you need to see Till specifically, right? Because there's other movies and stories that are out that you can go play and watch. You know, I don't think 
I think Fruitville Station, Selma, you know, some of those are a little dated, but shoot, Emmett Till was right around the time of, of, of Selma, you know, um, he wasn't killed in the 80s. So um, I think it's important. I think, you know, of course, Black Adam, you were like, oh, you know, Black Adam is a superhero story. You can watch any one of those stupid superhero stories, but I think just like, you know, Emmett Till's story, there's other dramas you can watch. Go watch The Woman King, it's still in theaters. But, you know, I think it's important to do that. I think it's, um, I was reading an article with uh, Quentin Tarantino, talked about he wanted to bring theaters back. And I think that's an excellent idea, right? I think, why do we need to bring theaters up? Well, not back. I think he wanted to bring the fun of, of, of Grindhouse movies and all that back to theaters. And I think that is important. Um, I, I joke about, um, not really joke, but it's real. I was inspired by um, Lloyd Kaufman, um, uh, 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 Tyler Perry, as filmmakers. I am inspired. I, when I, Medea Boo was one of the first Tyler Perry movies that I, not first Medea movies that I really liked. I saw it in Atlanta and people were falling out of their seats laughing. And of course, laughter is contagious. So then I started laughing. I wasn't a hater on Medea. It's just that I was introduced to Medea when, he, when Tyler Perry used to come to the um, um, theater uh, City College, I can't remember the name of it, but um, he used to come up there and do his plays. He used to come to New York with the Medea plays, and that's how I was introduced. And there was a lot of theater, not necessarily of men dressing like women, but there was a lot of lighthearted plays, fun plays. Every play wasn't the piano lesson or overly serious, right? Um, or tragic, right? So there was a lot of different plays and Tyler Perry was one of those things and it was almost a breath of fresh air to see something humorous, right? Um, but I didn't really con you know, connect or it just didn't get the energy, right? It was something to the, the theater giving that energy, you know, um, with the laughter that made me fully enjoy it. And I am a grindhouse dude. I love movies that exploit the theatrical experience from causing people to react to the um, react to the things on the screen, to um, surprises. I like the cheesiness sometimes of it. You know, um, I like all of that, right? And I like movies that do that. Um, I don't think everything needs to be avatar perfect. I think sometimes, you know, you can have that. Now, do you mix it? No. You don't try to cheese up an avatar. But for movies that are, you know, slip up a little bit, yo, it's perfectly fine. Movies that have, you know, some uh, dead pan acting, it, 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 it works for me, right? It works for me. And so I liked Tyler Perry having that I like Lloyd Kaufman you know just his boldness and doing different things with his stories that you know people might not even try he tries in his films and I think that is important so yeah I like I like these movies um and that's really it uh I, I know I'm talking about comedy and I'm talking about drama but yeah there's a lot to to both of those things probably can't be finished in this comment but again like I said like share subscribe and comment you know all right sci-fi express lane Jeff Carroll's out